know I'm safe, you'll never leave. Ooh, oh, oh. Ooh, even with fear just to dim my light. Ooh, I won't walk by my side. Cause I can feel you rising on the Amen. Amen. Bless God. I'm Pastor Alicia Williams. Welcome to Life in Christ International Church. Welcome tonight to our midweek Bible study. Here at Life in Christ International Church, the Lord has been blessing us all month long. We, out of the Word of God, have been gleaning and learning as much as we can about what the Bible teaches us about divine destiny. The Lord blessed us with our end of message, uh, end of month message that that challenged us to reach and to continue to reach for divine destiny and and the last week in our midweek bible study the lord ministered to us from the life and story of uh of um uh, <laughs> um we had we had queen esther we had uh queen david uh, excuse me <laughs> queen esther and uh king david excuse me let me catch up with myself for just a minute amen um, but but the Lord has really, really been showing us through his word. And we'll see yet another level in the word of God on tonight about divine destiny. And I'm thankful tonight that the Lord reminds us and the Lord continues to remind us through his word that each and every one of us, and, and maybe sometimes we do need to be reminded, Maybe sometimes we do need to be uh, uh, encouraged just a little bit more that each and every one of us have a divine destiny. Each and every one of us have a divine calling from the Lord. It may be to clean the church. It may be uh, to be the fiduciary, to, to, to pay for the church's expenses. It may be to preach, to teach, to pastor, to prophesy. But each and every one of us, every one of us, we are the temple of God and God has called us for a unique and divine purpose. I love the life and story that we're going to get into tonight during our midweek Bible study. As the Lord was opening up his word to me as I was preparing for the study, just just the, the, the fruitfulness of, of God's word and, and the fruitfulness of the spirit of God, um, it's as if the life and blood of the word just jumped off the page into my spirit. And I thank God for that tonight. And I pray that as, as you grab your Bibles during this midweek Bible study to, to read with us uh, during this study, that, that the Lord will meet you. And, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. And of course, you all know that I have my notes, so you're going to hear me rattling pages because I don't want to miss a thing. I don't want to miss anything that the Lord has um, laid upon my heart tonight to share with you. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and get right into a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for this time in your word. We thank you tonight, oh God, for your divine will, your divine plan, and your divine purpose. We thank you, Father, for divine destiny. Continue to show us, Lord. We recognize that even as we, we have uh, consecrated this month as the month of divine destiny, and here at the church we've been studying and being intentional in your word, we know tonight, Father, we're only scratching the surface. Your word says, O oh God, that no eye have seen, neither ear has heard the things that you have in store for those who love you. And so, Lord, we, we honor you and we praise you. We just invite you into this midweek Bible study. We invite you into this time that you, O oh God, will continue to get all the glory, all the honor and praise. We love you, Father. We bless you, Lord God. We praise you and we thank you. Amen and amen. So, tonight, Tonight, the Lord is ministering to us through the life and story of John the Baptist. And, and as the Lord was preparing my heart for this study, and as the Lord was preparing me for this week, I again, and I, and I think I mention it every midweek Bible study, every time we have a service, there are so many dynamic men 
and women of God in the Bible. Even when you open up Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it gives us a list of all of those. And, and, and so um, I believe the Lord has me being very particular about the life and stories that he is choosing it that he has chosen. And I believe that even as we get closer and closer to the word of God, there's so many more layers to divine destiny. There's so much more to understand about divine destiny. And really, truly, this month, we have just been getting a glimpse. But as the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, we'll come into a fuller place, a more mature place in the things of God as it pertains to divine destiny. And so tonight, um, we are going to study, and we're going to be reading out of the Gospel of Luke tonight. Um, the last couple of Bible studies, um, we started in the Old Testament Scripture. Uh, our very first midweek Bible study about divine destiny was about um, Moses. And, and then we continued in the Old Testament Scripture, and the Lord ministered to us about Queen Esther. And, and then we continued even more. Um, in the scripture, and we learned about King David last week, and so tonight we're moving into uh, the Gospels. We're moving into um, our New Te Testament scripture. So tonight, um, and and tonight we have a lot of scripture to cover, but it's not about the number of verses we read. It's about the the divine message that the Lord lifts up out of His Word, and so tonight the Lord has us coming from. Um, uh, Luke, the first chapter tonight, we're going to be reading specifically from uh, verse 57 through verse 80. That's going to be uh, uh, the, the passage of scripture that we're going to cover on tonight. And so um, tonight in our midweek Bible study, we shift from our Old Testament scriptures into a portion of the life and story of one of what I consider one of the main heroines of the Bible. Tonight we have um, uh, an uh, unusual, that's what I'll say, an unusual amount of scripture to read. And, and I believe it's going to help us to, to come into um, a fuller understanding, a, a, a fuller um, experience uh, as the Lord ministers and continues to minister divine destiny in and through his word. Tonight, um, this midweek Bible study looks at um, a, a glimpse of the life and story of John the Baptist. I, I just recently mentioned that to you. And, and as we continue to allow the Lord to lead us as it pertains to divine destiny, the hope is, is, is gleaning and, and, and learning as much as we can about divine destiny as we get a glimpse of of the life and story of John the Baptist. It, it leads our life um, even that much more into what God has divinely purposed and, and predestined for each of our own lives. And, and I know each time we, we, we have our midweek Bible study, each time the Lord ministers to my heart about our study, for some reason, he, he brings me to the place where the Word of God is about a particular uh, a man of God. It is about a particular woman of God in Scripture. But, but he lifts his spirit. He lifts the very nature of his character and, and, and his essence and, and the nature of who he is out of his Word. And, and it comes close to heart. It comes close to our own personal walk and relationship with the Lord. And I think tonight the Lord allows us to see just how close he is and just how how um, he operates when it and as it pertains to divine destiny. And so, um, again, we get a glimpse of, of what God has divinely purposed and, and predestined for each of our own lives. Tonight, the Lord introduces divine destiny through Zacharias and his wife Elizabeth and we'll see that in the scriptures in just a minute. Zacharias and, and, and I believe we were familiar with this and his wife Elizabeth up until now as we pick up reading the word of God in the gospel of Luke the first chapter the 57th verse up until now they were well advanced in, in years and they had passed um, childbearing and, and they had no children. 
Elizabeth was barren, and then we'll read that in the scripture, we'll come to understand that. They were childless, the scripture says, but miraculously, early on in, in the gospel of Luke, the first chapter, uh, uh, the angel of the Lord visited Zacharias in the temple as, 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 um, as, as he was, uh, uh, conducting his, his priestly duties and, and the, the angel of the Lord foretells of the birth of, 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 uh, Zacharias son and, um, to him and his wife, um, Elizabeth. And, and the scripture says, because, and, and I, I love this, this is really close to home, because Zacharias's petition, because of Zacharias's prayer was heard by God. And, and so tonight, as we prepare to enter into yet, um, uh, um, what I believe is another level of divine destiny, we are and continue to be encouraged and we are reminded in and through God's word that God is at work. It doesn't matter how long you've been saved. It doesn't matter what day or what moment or second you gave your life to Christ. It doesn't matter how young you are, how smart you are, or how old you are. God is at work and I believe in this account of scripture, as we revisit, as we get a glimpse of the life and story of John the Baptist, well, we'll see just how close God is and just how, how important divine destiny is to the heart and mind of God. And so tonight our study is not so much about seeing ourselves in the word of God, but, but about seeing God completely. It's, it's, um, it's about getting a glimpse of the life and story of John the Baptist. And and what I mean by that, the word of God tonight is so full, it's so rich that um it really takes if you if you do have your focus on yourself or you do have your focus on your circumstance or situation, it takes the focus off of you and it points directly and solely and completely to God. And as we get into reading the word of God, we'll experience that. And so I believe when we take the focus off of ourselves and, and we allow the focus to solely rest on God and solely rest on the things of God, we find divine purpose. We find divine destiny. And this is not something that we're going to read in scripture but it's something that, that is made manifest. It's something that unfolds from coming into greater understanding as to what God is ministering to us in and through his word about divine destiny. And so I want us to, to hold on to that because um, we, we don't want to get distracted and, and we don't want to miss God. We, we want to solely focus on our search and our reach for divine destiny. And, and we don't want to, to let other things steal our joy. We don't want to let other things take um, our focus away from what the Lord has carved out this month for, for what the Lord has carved out this time in his word for. And that's divine destiny. We may not get the full picture at this second or at this moment. It may take this time next year for us to get that aha moment in the word of God about what the Lord ministered to us this, this, this month. But as long as we are intentional and as long as we allow the Lord to continue to be the fullness of who he is in our souls, there's no way that, um, the word of God won't continue to be made manifest in every area of our life. And so I believe that in our scripture, God meets us in his word and he shares with us what I believe is yet another level of divine destiny. That's what we're going to see when we start reading the word of God tonight. We, uh, as we already know, as already uh, uh, shared with you, we have a number of verses to cover. But in our scripture reading, I believe the Lord prepares our heart to meet him in yet another level of destiny. And the reason I say that is that at the more we read the word of God and the more we get to see um, him reveal himself, 
And, and we're talking about getting just a glimpse of the life and story of John the Baptist. We meet God, and, and a lot of that will come to see, will be a witness in our walk, in our relationship with God. And, and I thank God for him allowing his word to, to take root in our souls and, and allowing his word um, um, to, to unfold for us, for greater understanding, for a better place, a better walk and relationship with God. And so tonight as we continue in God's word, I want us to um, allow God to, to, to unfold divine destiny um, in our lives, as we look at the life of Zacharias the priest um, and his wife Elizabeth, who, um, as a scripture uh, uh, will share in, in the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, she's a descendant of Aaron, the very first high priest. And 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 I want us tonight to allow the Holy Spirit to 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 continue to reveal to us in God's word, how divine destiny comes about on yet another level. And I want us to continue to be encouraged of the Lord and, and by the spirit of the Lord and by the power of God's word. And, and that's how um, we can't get there in our flesh. We can't get there in our own knowledge. We can't get there in our, in our own understanding. It takes the, the Holy Spirit to bring us into where God is. It takes the Holy Spirit to allow us to come to a place where we meet God in and through his word. And so as we prepare to get into our scripture reading, we know we have a lot of verses to cover, but it's not about the number of verses. It's about meeting God in his word. Again, tonight, the title of this midweek Bible study is simply Divine Destiny, a glimpse from the life and story of John the Baptist. And in this account of scripture, God is ministering himself to us. That's that's the only way that I could um, explain it. That's the only way that I could um, really get to what the Lord is sharing with us in and through his word on tonight. Um, we will, um, and this is this is how we get to meet God, and, and it's in and through the word of God. We, we come into the design of God's divine will, God's divine plan and divine purpose in and through his word. We know that last week the Lord reminded us that he is the orchestrator of divine destiny. But tonight I believe we move to a different place where where we take focus off of ourselves and we soulless focus on where we meet God as it pertains to divine destiny. I love how the Lord unfolds this for us on tonight. I love how when we get into the word, we'll see <laughs> divine destiny made manifest through the fulfillment of God's word, through the fulfillment of divine prophecy. And so here at the church, as we get closer to the end of this month of March, we continue to be intentional this month and gleaning and learning as much as we can about what the Bible teaches about divine destiny. And and I think it's rich, even richer to, to look at the lives and stories of those whom the Lord has given us in the Bible. And, and those lives, I believe, um, helps really to make what God is ministering to us in the spirit more tangible. And so tonight, as we continue in our study, this midweek Bible study, we meet God in his word and, and we come to yet another level of divine destiny. And tonight in prayer, the Holy Spirit meets us as we read God's word, as we allow the Lord to reveal himself to us, as we continue to come into the place of divine destiny. Again, tonight, our scripture takes us into our New Testament scripture, it takes us into the gospel, and we yet again are in a familiar passage of scripture. Tonight, Zacharias and his wife, Elizabeth, who were barren and, and had no children, they have a son. They have a son, John the Baptist. And, and tonight, in this midweek Bible study, again, uh, the Lord is leading us to, to talk about and to glean and to learn as much as we can about divine destiny. And I, I can't say it enough or stress it enough. It is imperative 
that God's word take lead. It is imperative that God's spirit takes lead. It, 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 it's, it's that we, we, we intentionally come to move into our place uh, as, as God's willing vessels. And, and, and I, I said that the caveat uh, being God's willing vessel is, is, is a vehicle to get to God's divine will and divine purpose for our lives. And so again, the Lord is ministering tonight about divine destiny, but in and through this account of scripture that ministers to us on yet another level as it pertains to divine destiny. Again, the title of our midweek Bible study, the title of this lesson is Divine Destiny, a glimpse of John the Baptist. And this is, I believe, a time um, uh, where we prepare to meet God in his word. And and again, we are encouraged and 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 uh, eager and, and, and willing to come into knowing and experiencing God's divine destiny on yet another level. And, and if we can grasp that, if we can come into that place once we get into the word of God, um, we, we understand, we, we, we have a divine counter in, in um, what the Lord is ministering to us in this season during this time about divine destiny. And so tonight the Lord ministers to us about divine destiny in and through his word. And we're encouraged to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to our hearts, minds, and souls um, just where we find destiny, just where we can meet God. And so as we continue to trust in God's divine will and God's divine plan and purpose on a whole different level tonight, we meet God in his word and God has the lead. We know God has the lead. Again, we're reading in the Gospel of Luke tonight, the first chapter, and tonight we're going to start at verse 57. In this New Testament scripture, the Lord, I believe, introduces us to yet another level, very important aspect of divine destiny. And of course, as always, we're reading tonight and we're studying tonight from the Amplified Bible. So what that means is that we're getting ready to get into our scripture reading. That means that you are to grab your Bible right now and I want you to turn your your Bible to the Holy Scriptures. We're going to the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, and we're kicking off our scripture reading tonight at verse 50. Seven. So I want you to go there with me. The Gospel of Luke, the first chapter and verse 57. I'm going to give you some time to turn to Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 57. And out of the Amplified Bible, the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter and the 57th verse reads for us on tonight. Now the time had come for Elizabeth to give birth And she gave birth to a son. Verse 58, her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her. And they were rejoicing with her. So, um, verse 59, it happened that on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child as required by the law. That they intended to name him Zacharias after his father. Verse 60, but his mother answered, no, indeed. Instead, he will be called John. Verse 61, and they said to her, none of your relatives is called by that name. Verse 62, then they made signs to John the Baptist's father as to what he wanted him called. Verse 63, and he asked, Zacharias asked for a writing tablet and wrote as follows. His name is John. And they were all astonished. Verse 64, at once Zacharias' mouth was opened and his tongue freed and he began speaking, praising and blessing and thanking God. Verse 65, then fear came on all their neighbors and in all these things were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. And verse 66, all who heard these things kept them in mind, saying, What then will this little boy turn out to be? For the hand of the Lord was certainly with him to bring about his birth. 
Tonight we're talking about divine destiny. We're continuing in uh, uh, and being a, intentional about gleaning and learning as much as we can about divine destiny. And, and I love the word of God. I, I love how God meets us in his word. Tonight the Lord introduces us and, and, you know, and I said this already to yet another level, another place in divine destiny. Tonight, the Lord shows us in his word that divine destiny is the fulfillment of his word. It is the fulfillment of prophecy. Tonight, miraculously, Elizabeth, who's old and, and barren, has a child. And it's the fulfillment of God's word. Um, it's the fulfillment of what the angel Gabriel told Mary's husband, Zacharias, in the temple while Zacharias was doing his priestly duties. And tonight, Zacharias, who was mute, he now speaks as the Lord frees his tongue. After he writes on a tablet, his son's name shall be called John. A name that, as a community people said, none of uh, Elizabeth's relatives is called by that name. The, the community um, of people intended to name him Zacharias after his father. But Zacharias, who, who was mute, writes on a tablet, his name is John. Can we tonight, for just a minute, revisit the, the idea that God doesn't do things the way we expect, nor does he do things the obvious way or the way things are normally done. Here in God's word, God uses a name that is not the name of John the Baptist's father. He doesn't use uh, uh, the traditional customs. He doesn't use the norm of, of that time. And, and I want us to, my prayer is that we catch up uh, to where God is and to where the Lord is leading us. And, and, and God uses a name that is none of Elizabeth's relatives names. That name has never been used before. And, and if we understand the, the time that, that, that Zacharias and Elizabeth are living, if we understand that the culture of, of their time then, then indeed, they're way outside of the norm. But nothing in this account of scripture is the norm. Nothing. So, so, so in understanding, God reveals in and through his word. And, and we understand that we cannot put God in a box. Um, expecting, all, almost, almost demanding that, that he operates in our norm or at uh, the level of what we expect. And I, and I hope that's clear. Um, um, the Lord spoke that so loudly to me during preparation of this, this, this midweek Bible study. It, it, our nature automatically demands that, that it's something that we expect. Our nature, auto, our carnal nature, get me right automatically demands that it's something within our norm, something that we're used to or familiar with. But tonight, the Lord is reminding us that we can't put God in a box. And 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 God doesn't operate at the level of what we expect. He is outside of that. And and I have to say the shame on us if we try or continue to try or have tried to box God in in that way. Again, God does not operate within our limited parameters as it pertains to divine destiny. This, I believe, helps us to, to, to recognize that divine destiny comes in and through God alone. It, it can't be anticipated. We, we see in scripture and, and now we, we know and, and understand that God gave John the Baptist um what I call a new name, a, a, a different name. And, and he came into the world and was birthed into the world holding and, and carrying the very essence of divine destiny. And, and if we continue to look closely, we'll see God revealed. We'll see God unfolding 
for us himself in this account of scripture, in his word. And I thank the Lord for that. I thank him for opening up his word to us on tonight. And, and I believe there's really nothing more to add as it pertains to divine destiny. It is in God. It is through God and, and, um, and by God and for God alone. And, and as we take yet another look tonight at divine destiny, I believe we see and experience divine destiny on a whole different level. It's it's not controlled by man. It's not controlled by the norm or by expectations. And and so here in our scripture tonight, we see that divine destiny rests in the unexpected because we can't put God in a box. And we also see here that divine destiny comes to us on a whole different level, and it is still at the center of God's divine will. Tonight again, our Bible study lesson is ministering to us about divine destiny. I believe we see tonight and also experience tonight in and through God's word, Yet another level, an introduction to divine destiny in and through this account of scripture that ministers about John the Baptist. Tonight we continue. We, we, we are strongly encouraged to yield and to submit and to surrender. That's how we meet God. That's how the word of God unfolds in our lives. And so as we lean in all the more into God and into the things of God, we, we, we come into a place where God operates outside of the box as it pertains to divine destiny. And so as we pick up, our, our next set of verses, our, our final verses tonight in, in our midweek Bible study, we want to continue to see and experience God in and through his word as it pertains to divine destiny. As we continue in God's word, as we continue in the gospel of Luke, the first chapter, and as this account of scripture leads us tonight, we're gleaning and, 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 and we're we're learning and we're continuing to be encouraged in and through God's word as it pertains to divine destiny. It's about understanding and, and also recognizing and, and meeting God in and through his word. Tonight we know that this midweek Bible study is about divine destiny. And, and tonight and, and all month long and, and all year long basically we have been intentional about fully embracing where the Lord is taking us in this study, divine destiny. It, it can't be, as already mentioned, anticipated because God, again, is not in a box. And, and, I, and I hope it's clear as we read the account of scripture, as, uh, as John the Baptist came into the world, his, his parents were barren. They were old and childless. And then uh, the archangel Gabriel came and ministered to Zacharias as he was fulfilling his priestly duties. And they who were once barren are now, uh, uh, they have a child that, that was birthed. And, and so when I talk about, um, again, God, we can't put God in a box. He doesn't operate in our norm. And, and, you know, as I already mentioned, shame on us if we, if we move to that place where, where, where we're demanding or, or feel like if God doesn't fit in, in, in what our parameters. And so I thank the Lord for that revelation on tonight. I thank the Lord for that divine insight. We're seeking God for something. We're needing something from God. We want God to do something with our lives or to use us to serve him all the more. Then look outside your own personal parameters. Look outside what you expect and ask the Lord to help you to meet him in and through his word. Amen. And so again, we're continuing in God's word in the gospel of Luke, the first chapter. And again, this account of scripture leads us tonight to glean and to learn and to continue to be encouraged in and through God's word as it pertains to divine destiny. This week, um, 
we're, we're shifting to uh, uh, this place as we glimpse uh, the life of uh, uh, John the Baptist. And, and I'm encouraged tonight to, to remind us that this lesson and, and this season it's still about us doing and 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 being and and becoming and and it's also still about us revisiting and and refreshing renewing our place in God and in the things of God because we come to know that divine destiny that's where it is we come to know that that's where we meet divine destiny and, and I'm thankful to God for him reminding us of that on tonight. And so as we continue in prayer, as the Lord uh, uh, ministers to our hearts and souls about divine destiny, and as I always mention, it, it's, I, I feel compelled to, to say this once again, it's not just in this season, it's not just in tonight's midweek Bible study, um, um, it, it, it's it's for um, what we're doing right here. Um, it's for what we're gleaning and learning and experiencing right here. But it is also for eternal um, salvation. It, it's 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 for an eternity. And I thank the Lord for that clarity. I thank the Lord again for that insight. And so as we conclude our scripture reading tonight, we're going to finish up our last final verses. We're, we're reading from and gleaning from the gospel of Luke, the first chapter. We're picking up our scripture reading at verse 67, and we're going to conclude in our midweek Bible study tonight at verse 80. And so without delay, we're going to get right into our scripture reading again. I want you all to read with me, read along with me. I want you all to pick up your word and read along because the word, as, as you read it, as you read it with your eyes, as it, as it goes into your spirit, even if you read it out loud, it is transforming, it is transcending. And we already know that, but I wanted to remind you of it. And so, amen. Uh, the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, picking up at verse 57 Excuse me, picking up at verse 67. Verse 67 reads for us on tonight. Now Zacharias, his father, was filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by him. And he prophesied, saying, verse 68, Blessed, praise, glorified be the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited us and brought redemption to his people. Verse 69, and he has raised up a horn of salvation, a mighty and valiant savior for us in the house of David, his servant. Verse 70, just as he promised by the mouth of his holy prophets from the most ancient times. 71, Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. 72. To show mercy as he promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the promised blessing. Verse 73. The oath which he swore to Abraham our father. 74. To grant us that we be rescued from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Verse 75, in holiness being set apart and righteousness being upright before him all our days. Verse 76, and you child will be called a prophet of the most high for you will go on before the Lord, the Messiah to prepare his ways. Verse 77, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. Verse 78, because of the tender mercy of our God, with which the sunrise, the Messiah from on high, will dawn and visit us. Verse 79, to shine upon those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in a straight line and to the way of peace and serenity. Verse 80, the child continued to grow and to become strong in spirit 
and he lived in the deserts until the day of his public appearance to Israel as John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Messiah. I really wanted us to read Zechariah's prophecy. It is um, the only way to explain it, a restatement of what the Archangel Gabriel shared with Zacharias in the temple during the time that Zacharias was performing his priestly duties. But um, the only way that I can explain it, after you go through a test or trial, after you come face to face with God and you come face to face with the things of God, after you see the tangible manifestation of the miraculous in your life, on your behalf, after you experience not being able to speak and after you're obedient to God and to the things of God, you can now speak. I'm just, just, just paraphrasing divine destiny, the essence of divine destiny, the nature of divine destiny, what's, what's entail, what it entails, what, what's incorporated in it. We come to the place where we realize it is only the fulfillment of God's word. It is only the fulfillment of God's divine prophecy. And so I thank God for that on tonight. When we get to the meat of the word of God, God is there. He's also significantly present. God, God is made manifest in and through his word and tonight the lord leads us by his word into yet another realm of divine destiny into yet another level another place in divine destiny tonight it, it's not about who we are it, it's not about what we have done but it's about the fulfillment of divine destiny the fulfillment of god's word the Lord reminds us that his word, as it says in Isaiah 55 and 11, will not return void. And I want us to, to read that. Isaiah 55 and 11 out of the Amplified Bible says, So will my word be, which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, useless, without result, without accomplishing what I desire. And without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. I pray that you can hear me tonight. If there's nothing else you hear, if there's nothing else you receive out of this entire month of, of gleaning and learning about divine destiny, if, if there's nothing else in this entire month of being intentional and 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 ask I'm encouraging you ask God's help to 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 recognize and and to realize and live out the divine fact that God's word will not return to him void it will accomplish it will succeed and and I'm going to digress for just a minute because I want to be very very clear what I'm saying to you tonight is that we're not just going to grab the scripture and just haphazardly flip the Bible open to any page. What I'm talking about tonight is if you receive a prophetic word, if the Lord uh, uh, gives you a prophetic dream, if the Lord confirms or affirm a word, not us haphazardly doing those things it's it's originating from the mouth of God it's originating from and in and through God's divine will and purpose that's what I'm talking about I think um I, I had shared and I think this was during the, the fundraiser when, when when I was uh the Lord was dealing with me with my call to pastorship and with my call to ministry there's so many revelated, there's so many prophetic encounters and prophetic dreams and prophetic words. Um, and I was young in the Lord. I had just answered my call um, to ministry. And, and um, 
it's taken for the most part all of this time for me to come into the full understanding of what the Lord said way back way back when and and so in reading the word tonight and understanding even in a better way God and 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 the things of God the archangel Gabriel prophesied to Zechariah it would happen and and Zacharias <laughs> And these are just my words, was used to the norm. He was used to his expectation. He was used to his little box of expect expecting. He he didn't believe it, and that's how he became mute. You read it in the first part of the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. Um, but that didn't stop God's divine will, it didn't stop God's divine plan and purpose, it didn't stop God's divine destiny. And so, so I'm saying what I'm saying is. The very power of God's word, the very power of God's nature and his character can't fail. It won't fail. And I thank the Lord for allowing me to revisit that in his word and, and for the Lord reminding me of that. And, and and I pray that that reach you where you are in your walk and, and, and relationship with the Lord too. So again, I want to reread Isaiah 55 and 11. Out of the Amplified Bible, it says, so will my word be which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, useless, without result, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. This is God talking through the prophet Isaiah. These are God's words, meaning these words won't fail. They're not going to rust. They're not going to trick you. They're not going to be playing games. And And so... If you're sleeping and and you have a dream and, and the Lord reveals Isaiah 55 and 11 and you wake up out of your dream like, wow, Isaiah 55 and 11, you open up your Bible and you read it, you can stand on that prophetic word until all of eternity because that's where God is going to meet you. And so I thank God for him revealing that that after all is said and done, God is divine destiny. And he's encouraging us and providing us all of the right experiences and all of the right resources to bring us into where he is. And so hear me tonight. Again, if there's nothing else, know that God's word will not return void. And, and, and know that. It's not up to man's expectations. It's not up to man's norms, but it's up to God's divine will and divine destiny. And, and, and I want us to, to not lose sight of this divine fact. I, I want us to, to, to not um, uh, worry about um, those norms or, or, or let those norms distract you from embracing and, and living out and walking in divine destiny. And, and, and divine destiny, as we have, uh, have gleaned tonight, comes in and through um, the fulfillment of prophecy. It, it, as, as the Lord has ministered to us tonight, divine destiny comes in through the fulfillment of God's word and and the Lord shared with us in his word tonight that he told us and, and, and we read it he told Zacharias through the archangel Gabriel um, um, during Zacharias time of, of his priestly duties that that God heard Zacharias's petition he heard Zacharias's prayer and that his wife Elizabeth would bear um, Zacharias a son and, and and that they would name the the the, the son John, that's what the archangel told Zacharias in the temple. And here in our account of scripture, Elizabeth had that son. God's word fulfilled. God, God's prophecy fulfilled. And because her husband was mute at the time of the child's circumcision as required by the law, as the scripture says on the eighth day, they, they intended to, to name the child um, after Zacharias, after the child's father. But Elizabeth said, no, indeed, instead he will be called John. And again, they said to her, none of your relatives is called by that name. 
And, and so I believe we're reminded tonight by God through this encounter of his word, where we're reminded um, in God's word that God does not yoke himself to our customs, nor to our expectations, nor to our norms, but instead we are to yoke ourselves to an everlasting God. And this is where Elizabeth takes us tonight as God continues in revealing to us divine destiny. The, the scripture says her husband, who, who was mute, he, could, he couldn't speak since, since he had that encounter with, with the archangel Gabriel in the temple while he was conducting his priestly duties. That, that Zacharias asked for a writing tablet. And Zacharias wrote, his name is John. And immediately after, Zach after that, Zacharias' mouth was open, his tongue was freed, and he began, the scripture says, praising and, and blessing and thanking God. And, and, and Zacharias began to prophesy, as the scripture says, filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by God. Zechariah prophesies, and I want us to revisit this. I want us to rehearse this because we're, we're experiencing in Zechariah's prophecy divine destiny. We're experiencing uh, in Zechariah's prophecy uh, a God himself. And so Zechariah prophesies, and he prophesies immediately after um, um, writing on the tablet, his name is John that God brought redemption to his people, that God raised a horn of salvation, just as God had promised from the mouth of the prophets from ancient times. I, I want us to, to rehearse that. I want us to hear that. I want us to catch up with that. Zacharias prophesied salvation from our enemies and, and all who hate us and that God will show mercy to our fathers and remember his covenant with Abraham to grant us rescue from the hand of our enemies. And, and, and this would allow us to serve God without fear and holiness and righteousness before God all of our days. So we see here how we come into divine, divine destiny. We see here how uh, a, a divine destiny is made manifest in our very lives. And so it's important, and, and I'll say again, it's imperative, it is of great significance that we understand and that we rehearse and revisit and look for divine confirmation of God's fulfilled prophecy, divine confirmation of God's fulfilled word. God's divine destiny leads us to God's wholesomeness. It takes us into the fulfillment of God's holy covenant. It takes us into the fulfillment of what was spoken out of the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient times. It, it rescues from the hand of our enemies and, and it, it enriches us and empowers us and anoints us to serve God without fear and holiness and, and righteousness all our days. Not just a season, not just uh, because of this Bible study, because of uh, somebody told you. It is the fulfillment of the nature, the essence, the character, and epitome of who God is in his word, in his prayer and service. And we see tonight that God is the fulfillment of divine destiny. It, it may take some time, as I said and mentioned already, for us to digest that. It may be this time next year where we have our aha moment from uh, the word in God. But, but our spirit and, and our mind and our soul will catch up because God's word is active. His word is alive. And, and what God has already done will come into it. What God is doing will come into it because God is transcending. He, he, he's not confound by time. And, and, and divine destiny was with the prophets, if we understand it, from ancient times. Divine destiny was with the holy covenant that God made with Abraham. And, and tonight, 
the charge, that the challenge goes almost, I believe, without saying we will take courage. We will allow the Lord to use our lives to walk out divine destiny. Zacharias, his prophecy, after the Lord opened his mouth and freed his tongue, ends saying, and you child will be called a prophet of the most high who will go before the Lord the Messiah to prepare his ways, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. All of this will happen. All of this will come to pass, not only because of Zacharias, the priest, though he played an essential part, we know, not only because of Elizabeth, Zacharias' wife, though she also played an essential part, not only because of John the Baptist, even as as he was to go before the Lord to prepare his ways. If we, and, and I want us to really grasp this on tonight, by the grace and mercy of God, grasp what the Lord is ministering to us tonight in and through a scripture um, that our life is in the fulfillment of divine destiny because of who God is. And, and, and the passage of scripture ends tonight and, and it tells us the child continued to grow and to become strong in spirit and he lived in the deserts until the day of his public appearance to Israel as John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Messiah, divine destiny. And, and so tonight, I wanted us to see the, the varying facets that incorporate, that are incorporated in divine destiny. We, we saw the priestly duties. We saw the lineage um, with Elizabeth being from the lineage of Aaron, the first um, high priest. We saw the culture. We saw the expectations. We saw the norms. We saw God's archangel, Gabriel. We saw the fulfillment of God's word, the fulfillment of prophecy. If we hold on to our cultural norms, if, if we hold on to our own limited expectations, then we risk missing the fulfillment of God's divine destiny. And so let's not miss what God has divinely intended for us even before the foundation of the world. If you understand what I'm saying, divine destiny for us, for who we are right now existed way back then. We understand what the Lord is ministering to us tonight as it pertains to divine destiny, that 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 greater level, that greater aspect that that and and so I want us to to be encouraged to to take on strength take on the strength of the Lord I want us to be encouraged to take on what the scripture ministers to us tonight the peace and the serenity of the Lord and and I want us to uh, um, not uh or be unyielding until we come to that place where the Lord uses our lives to come into the fulfillment of divine destiny. And, and I already share with you that sometimes uh, because of uh, what we've suffered or because of distractions or because of life, we live as if we don't have a divine destiny. We live as if the Lord hasn't given us the great commission or the great commandment. And so our lesson and the insight from our lesson tonight about divine destiny really doesn't require too much from us other than trusting and believing. Divine destiny is God and it is the fulfillment of God's word. It's the fulfillment of, of God's prophecy. And, and as for John the Baptist, even before he was born, even um, his miraculous birth and, and after his parents were barren and, and childless, I believe that leads us to see, it leads us to know and to experience God and to, to, to come to the place where we find God in divine destiny, even all the more. 
And I thank God for that on tonight. And that's how we're going to close out this midweek Bible study. And and my prayer is that, and, and my prayer is always that even what the Lord is ministering, what the Lord will continue to minister after this midweek Bible study is concluded, that the fullness of, of, of God's uh, a divine destiny, that the, the full manifestation of divine destiny, we grasp it and, and we possess it and we become it, not just for ourselves, but we yield and we surrender. We allow the Lord to use us. The Lord, um, this has been a busy couple of weeks. We, as a matter of fact, uh, the Lord ha has blessed me to to um, go to a pastor's bishop meeting, um, which is going to be early next week. And um, and then we have um, the Lord has blessed us to to come into contact with international pastors and and uh, talk about um, reaching lost souls and and talk about sponsorship and and um, all of those things. It's it's the the common denominator. Um, I used to tell an old classmate of, of mine is God. It's, it's glorifying God, it's honoring God, it's worshiping God, it's blessing God. At the end of the day, God gets the glory. At the end of the day, it is about the Lord. Um, it reminds me of the scripture where uh, Apostle Paul says that um, uh, there are some who, who preach, but they, they preach with, with ill motives. He said, it doesn't matter as long as Christ is, 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 as long as the gospel is preached, as long as Christ is preached. We, we can't, we can't spend energy and time caught up in all of that. We have to focus on what honors God. We have to focus on what glorifies God. Why would we allow the enemy to take away from us? We only have a short span of time here in the earth and we want to be focused on using every waking moment to, to grow and, and to do as the scripture says, it, it says that, that the child grew and, and he grew in the spirit of the Lord. That's where we want to be at. That's what we want our focus and all of our energy and all of our effort to be at. And so I thank God on tonight. And again, my prayer is that the word will continue to manifest itself. Next week, we are still in divine destiny. Um, we have, uh, Actually, our, our last Thursday in the month here at the church, um, as we look at divine destiny, and and on a personal level, I want to encourage us to look at we look at Moses, and where did God meet you in the life and story of Moses? And I, I want us to re look at Queen Esther. Where where did the Lord God meet you in the life and story of Queen Esther. And I want us to re-look at King David. Where did the Lord meet you? This is this is to, to uh, enrich our souls. This is to strengthen us for this walk uh, 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 that we're on. Because the word of God says that the race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but to the one that endures. And so this is to make sure that we make it home we make it to heaven we make it through um and and so um let us be encouraged in the lord let us continue to to allow the word of god to come into full manifestation in our walk and relationship with the lord let us be encouraged to allow the lord to lead us in our lives into divine into divine destiny how god wants to use us and so with that being said I'm going to close out in prayer, but before I do that, I do want to take just a few moments to share our weekly announcements. Um, so, of course, we know here at the church every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have our Sunday school hour. And every month we have our end of month worship. We move into the month of April. So in April, our end of month worship will be on Sunday, the 17th. And so at the church, what that means is that at 10 a.m. we'll have our Sunday school hour. And directly after that, we'll go into our end of month worship. This Saturday, this Saturday, we will start our minister's training. Again, it's it's a, a, a foundational environment. It's um, to help kind of get a better understanding about 
biblical theology and Christian theology and, and um, uh, our biblical worldview as confessing Christians and to learn more about how the Lord has shaped you and how God wants to use you in his kingdom. And so I'm encouraging you all to be a special part of that. I encourage you all to govern yourselves accordingly to our different uh, schedules and, 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 and appointments that we have. I want you all uh, to be prayerful also about our international pastors meeting. We have, uh, it'll be very early um, Monday, Monday morning, very early Monday morning, just before the pastor's bishop conference. But I want you to pray for our pastors. We have a pastor in India. We have a pastor in Pakistan. And of course, our pastors in the Philippines. So I want you to uh, bless, I pray that, that God's divine blessing be upon them and, and that the Lord um, continues to minister to their souls, that, um, that uh, there be no hindrances or nothing lacking, whatever resources that they need, whatever reach that they need for the souls that God has called them to minister to, that um, their reach uh, be as, as the prayer of Jabaz. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close out with a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for our time and your word. We thank you, Father, for yet another level, another divine insight of, of uh, divine destiny. Continue, Father, all the more to reveal who you are. Continue, Father, all the more to lead, guide, and direct in all things. We thank you, O oh God, for your goodness. We thank you, O oh God, for your spirit. Continue, O oh God, to make your pathways known. Continue, O oh God, to manifest and reveal in full manifestation your divine destiny. We thank you, O oh dear God, for who you are. We ask, Father, that you will continue to have your way. We ask, Father, that you will continue to be glorified in every area, in every circumstance, and in every situation. Father, you continue to get the glory. You continue, O oh God, to be magnified in the minds and the hearts and the souls of your people. Father, it's so easy to get bogged down in norms and cultures and our own personal expectations. Father, don't let us miss you. We lay all of that stuff down. We ask, O oh God, that it be removed from us as far as the east is from the west, that your blood will continue to cover us. And, O oh dear God, that your light and your light alone will continue to shine. We thank you for it now, God. We love you, O oh God, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless. I will see you all Sunday morning at 10 a.m. during our Sunday school hour. Be enriched in the Lord, and I'll see you then.